There are moments and times when I feel inadequate. There are moments and times when I feel, uh, oh my goodness, uh, this is not going to happen the way I want it to happen. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes can then create feelings of fear and anxiety. Welcome to Braving It, a show I am so excited about purely because we are talking everything that resonates with who I am. I am going to be engaging in brave conversations with people who have said yes to brave conversations. And so I have a person who has said yes. I'm introducing to you Bongani Mageba. He is a wonderful human being and I can't wait for you to get to, to meet him just in the same way that I've met him. And so, Bongani, thank you for braving it and thank you for saying yes. Thank you very much. So, Bongani, you completed your LLB at the UKZN. Mm. You then did your MBA through mm. Gibbs. Mm. And then after that, you completed a general management uh, program, program with Harvard Business School. Yeah. And then you went on to do your investment strategies and portfolio management course at the University of Pennsylvania in the USA. Yeah. And now you are completing your doctorate. It's called Ko. Is that good? Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. What a man. Okay, so I'm still going on. Professionally, you from as far back as the 90s have been assuming executive positions mm -hmm. within massive corporates in the country. Corporates such as Unilever, SAB, Edcon, Ellerines, Stanlib as the MD of retail investments. You then moved on to Liberty and are now at APSA and you are the managing exec for the non-banking financial uh, services. That's correct. Sure, a mouthful. You have wow. done a lot yeah. with your life. It's been a long journey. It's been a long <laughs> journey, hey? Yeah. Is this, you know, something like this, it strikes me as the kind of thing, well, this is why this whole thing makes so much sense. Because when I met you a few years back, you were at Stanlib yeah. and you were focused then and I'm so glad to see that you're focused now. Surely, your upbringing had a lot to do with the focused person that you are today. If not, do you believe that all of that is just an innate ability that you have? Look, I think, uh, Sandy, I think you're spot on. Um, from my perspective, Sandy, my upbringing had a lot to do with it. Mm. Um, I had very focused parents okay. as well. So I think that's where it comes from. Yeah. So, yep. uh, you know, there's a saying, I think it's a Nigerian proverb that... Uh, a calf watches the cow eat. So you've mm. almost got to see it mm. somewhere, generally speaking. Mm. But I think of and above that though, I've, um, of course the opportunities that I've had have shaped me. Mm. Um, but there is no doubt that I've also gone on to make something of myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because there is that element, yeah. you can't escape yeah. from that. So 100%. you've got to make certain choices yeah. um, that obviously put you in a particular position mm. and uh, help you get to where you want to get to. So. Um, uh, amongst the negative ones, I guess I've made some positive ones. <laughs> a lot, well. a lot of positive ones. You know? Okay. So, yeah, that's how I would look at it. Yeah. Wow. Obviously, in your day-to-day, -day, you shoulder mm. a lot of responsibility. You have several people reporting into you. You're managing big budgets, massive big decisions that you're making on a regular. It's hard to believe that someone like yourself struggles with any of those human emotions that nobody wants to talk about. The shame, the anxiety, the fears. Do you, in your everyday, day-to-day -day delivery at work, struggle with any one of these aspects that I've just touched on? Yeah, you know, um, I'm, I'm generally uh, an optimist. Mm. So I always move off the premise that something can be done 
and something should be done. Um, and I wake up every morning with the perspective that, um, you know, I'll succeed. Mm. Mm. Um, and that's how I prepare myself um, for each day. And of course, that's got to be uh, done consistently. But absolutely, as a human being, I do suffer from some of these feelings. Mm. There are moments and times when I feel inadequate. There are moments and times sure. when I feel, uh, oh my goodness, uh, this is not going to happen the way I want it to mm. happen. And that mm. sometimes can then create feelings of fear and anxiety. Mm. But um, absolutely, I have to deal with those. But having said that, I also believe that most emotions are there to be understood and managed. Mm. So one of the key skills that I try and build and I've built mm. is to understand where the emotion is coming from. Okay. And how I can then manage it. But it doesn't mean that I don't go through it. Mm. I still go through that emotion. Mm -hmm. But then I would often take an opportunity to actually, why am I feeling this way? Mm. Is there something I have done, something I can do up? something about and then how do I manage it you mm. know because that's the emotion that I have at that point in time yeah how yeah. do I manage it how do I then get over that emotion um, because on the one hand what's important to go through emotion you don't mm. want it to be with you for a prolonged or unnecessary yes, time yes because yes. emotions are actually yes. not bad mm. I suppose I suppose it's also about um, you know you rightly put it identifying them managing them but the managing them part is it about literally deliberately seeking the help that you need in order to manage them is it about how do how do you seek the help that you need how have you managed mastered the art of managing your emotions <clears throat> is it a program that you are on people you've spoken to mm. so um and and you're absolutely right you know they they are possibly two schools of thought the people who think that emotions work themselves out you know, mm. time heals, you know mm. that saying? Mm. But quite frankly, most of the time you actually have to be deliberate yeah. in managing the emotion. Um, and how I deal with it is I take the opportunity personally to reflect. Yeah. I reflect a lot, by the way. Yeah. I reflect on my actions, my thought process, mm. what I'm doing, what I'm yeah. trying to do. And I spend a lot of time doing that. But besides that, I also have people that I talk to. I also mm. have people that I engage with. Yeah. People that I can debrief and also bounce certain emotions with them, certain thoughts with mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Just to get their input. Yeah. Those are people that I've built relationships with of trust and understanding. Then I I use them, you mm. know, to say, look the sounding board. Absolutely. This is how I'm feeling about this, you know, mm. am I over exaggerating my mm. emotions? Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> or is this something that I need to deal with? Yeah. And I found it absolutely useful. Okay. And believe it or not, I actually play that role for a number of people as well. Ah. So I have people who call me, yes. engage with me. I yes. mentor also a few people. Yes. So, and they say, look, this is what's happening in my life. How should I deal with it? And, and hmm. often for me, it's important to, to, to have that ability to channel emotions. Mm. So the management of emotions, by the way, sometimes not even that they disappear. Because some, some of them actually... You, you can't make them disappear immediately. Yeah, you learn to live with them. But it's also channeling them, mm -hmm. you know, so that they can be uh, extracted or at least become useful at the time when it's necessary. When they're going to debilitate you, mm -hmm. then you've got to shut them down mm. at that point. Sure. But um, it is absolutely useful that the management of emotions really is about channeling. Mm. Mm. If they happen to disappear at a certain point, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, a large part of it is about channeling the emotions. Saying, okay, at this point in time, mm -hmm. they're not useful mm -hmm. what I'm about to do or what I'm doing. Mm. Or at this point in time, it's fine for me mm. to have the emotion. Mm. You know, so, so, and I've learned that over the years. Now, in your rise up the corporate ladder, mm. I'm sure there were moments, there was probably a time or several times when you may have felt overlooked for a particular position um, or perhaps underappreciated by the people who you were serving. Because we spend a lot of time in these workplaces. Um, was there ever such an incident? And do you remember it clearly? And can you share it? And how did you overcome that feeling so that you don't build up resentment towards the people who you were expecting so much from? Yeah. Uh, that's a brilliant question, actually. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, quite frankly, 
Uh, well, first, let me say, yes, I have. And I'll tell you the experience. Mm. I've experienced just now. Mm. I've experienced exactly what you've just described. Um, and a part of me says, and this has become part of my belief system, that for many of us who are in senior corporate roles, you almost have to experience this because it helps to sh shape your leadership. Mm. You almost have to mm. go through that moment. I like that. Otherwise, you don't like get that. to really lead people in the right manner because you are oblivious mm. to an important matter is this that's been overlooked. So absolutely, a few years ago, if I can just relate to the story, mm -hmm. I, I had that exact same feeling. I had been fortunate to work in a business which is a great culture, great business, and an amazing relationship with the boss mm. that I had when I joined the business. Mm. Okay. And uh, him and I had an amazing relationship of understanding, support, mm. and I'd even go to the extent of saying care. Mm. And he then got moved or promoted okay. into a different role. Mm. And a new player, a new person came into the picture. Mm. And when we started off this relationship, because that is a relationship, mm. We tried both sides to define what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, from his perspective, he said to me, look, uh, you know what? You are highly rated in this business. I'd want to keep you here mm -hmm. and, and, and. But uh, Lorata must tell you from day one, it just never worked. Wow. It was wow. such a misfit. From day one, the with relationship. The new, with the new boss. With the new boss. Mm. He went after me. He created traps. He Ooh. undermined me. He, his value system, mm. uh, culture and expectation around leadership and what work is, his and mine were diametrically opposed. Mm. And it was almost irreconcilable. Wow. Um, and, uh, and it's probably the one time in my career, because the only time I've experienced this, mm -hmm. where I've actually... I can come to say I felt extremely anxious. Wow. Anxious. To be around him? him. Or to, to, wow. And around the business and anxious for my team, mm. anxious for my mm. reputation, because I care a lot about mm. that, um, anxious for my progress. Um, and um, I had to learn to channel this. I had to learn to get up in the morning, get in my car and go to work. Mm. and still lead my team mm. and not show any signs of weakness oh, wow. <laughs> whilst doing that. And um, I mean, ultimately, I had to tell him that I, I, I'm going to leave. Uh, this is not working out. And how Let's long had, you, had, you, had so, you had you been in that situation? Actually, for? strangely enough, I kept at it for two years. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> kept it <laughs> for time. two years. Um, uh, my team members left. Many other leaders in the business left except for his few acolytes that were mm. around him. Mm. Um, uh, the business was fundamentally turned upside down. Mm. And uh, look, ultimately as well, he was asked to leave. Um, mm. But it was a, an extremely bad experience. And I don't wish it upon anybody else. And wow. I would not have been able to understand that uh, until I had gone through it. And it was one of those necessary mm. experiences. Mm. But until then, I had a very smooth career. You know had been blessed with wonderful bosses, mm. wonderful working environment, wonderful mm. experience. Mm. And uh, this guy was uh, probably a necessary addition to my uh, 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 repertoire of skills and knowledge mm -hmm. and experience. Mm -hmm. But I learned to deal with anxiety and, and I learned to face him and his antics head on. You know, and I needed to do that. Uh, and, um, uh, and, and also learned to protect my team. Yes. Because he, he wanted to affect my team through me, mm. you know. So, no, it was a, it was a terrible, terrible time. Mm. And it took me a long time, I'm honest with you, to forgive him mm. uh, and to actually get over it. But I needed to so that I could move on. You know, it's interesting when you talk about moving on because a lot of, I, I find a lot of young professionals, when they yeah. encounter such in the workplace, yeah you know, um, <clears throat> such backlash, such, you know, opposing views, difficulty in, in just, you know, um, uh, call it getting things done yeah. and, and presenting themselves in the best light. 
people move on very quickly, mm. you know, um, because at some point they experience that, 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 that wreckage that happens in them and they're like, this is not worth it. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to stick around for this. I'm too good for this place. I need to move on. And sometimes perhaps, would you agree that we, that we do that too quickly? Quickly to an extent that we don't pick up the valuable lessons that come with those encounters and those experiences. Yeah. Look, I think generally you're right. And it's all about resilience. And, but before you can be resilient, you at least need to have isolated what you think the cause of the problem is. And often people don't do that. In other words, they have not been able to say, actually the cause of the problem is not me. Mm. It's this person that I'm dealing with. So I've still got the same knowledge, yeah. skills, level of output and delivery. Mm. The variable here is not that. That's not what's changed. What's actually changed here is this person. And because you don't have that view, then mm -hmm. you tend to give up too quickly. Yeah. Yeah. When in fact, yeah. you still need to yeah. affirm who you are, what your value is, and what your quality of work is. Because that remains intact often, by the way. Mm. It's just mm. the next person that... And then you, once you've isolated that, okay, mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Then I must carry on doing my job while still trying to manage it. Because you can't ignore. Often, by the people like those, yes. I couldn't ignore who this guy was. First, because he was the boss. Mm -hmm but also because there was just so much noise in the business, incredible amount of noise in the business. And as a leader, I couldn't ignore that, mm. but I had to separate what issue was so that I could get on to saying, okay, great, I'm gonna continue doing what I do best mm -hmm. until I feel it's no longer possible. That's why I didn't leave too quickly. Okay, okay. And I stuck it out for at least two years. I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of people who are eyeing you on a daily, you know, headhunters who are saying, this guy I need for the next business. All these people that are approaching you on a regular with the promise of perhaps a bigger salary, when they come, how do you maintain focused on the responsibilities that you have in the organization that you are working for? Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, um, uh, uh, that comes and I actually do get approaches mm -hmm. and this day and age is even much easier to access information on just about anybody. Yeah. So uh, there's platforms that help you do that those days. Um, and really what's helped me, um, because except for my first job when I left university, every other job I've received through headhunting, mm. um, is firstly is this thing around fit. For as long as I believe that the environment I'm in mm -hmm. is serving my purpose and I'm serving the company's purpose. Yes. I then don't engage. Mm. Are you with me? I'm with you. And I've had I'm those moments you. in my career where the fit has been so strong mm. that I have been able to use that criterion to say there is absolutely no need for me to be looking at other things. Wow. As well because the fit is that strong. And I really and what I what I mean by fit is the culture, it's the brand, the it's values. the leadership, mm. it's the values. As long as I feel a strong alignment. And of course some people will position the headhunting conversation differently. Mm. They'll manage to get you into some sort of conversation. Mm. Mm. Um, so you don't even realize a headhunter. Some people are <laughs> really? Like, oh no. Some people do it extremely well. Okay. No, they do it extremely well. So um, very sophisticated headhunting happens. Mm. Uh, but even then, I sit back and I say, actually, is my fit with this current business the right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what am I looking for? That's the second thing. So uh, it's very, very important that you are always clear about what you are looking for. Mm. Otherwise, the right for many of us, we become uh, a solutions to other people's plans. Mm. So those, that business, that head hunter, yeah. is trying to solve a certain problem. problem. Mm -hmm. One for themselves, mm. and then for that business that they're uh, representing. Yes. Now, you need to be absolutely crystal clear about what you're looking for, so that you don't become an appendage to mm. other people's problems. Mm. You know? and, and for me, that keeps me grounded. And I turn away a number of them, for as long as I'm clear. And when fit starts to to be loose. It's when then mm. the whole conversation says, okay, let me talk to this one. Let mm, me, mm, what are you coming mm, with? Mm, mm. For me, as long as you, I think you, you sort of maintain that thread, 
it's much easier to keep yourself grounded and focused on the job at hand. You know, one could even say that that is a, a, a brave conversation that I think more people need to have yeah. at the beginning of their careers. Yeah. I think a lot of people go into the, <clears throat> I suppose, the, the corporate space or job hunting with the, you know, I'm asking type of approach. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I am grateful for any opportunity yeah. that is given to me, as opposed to saying, this is what I want out of the business. Absolutely. You know, so... From internship stage, that is where you need to be very clear that what does, how can this business serve me and where I'm going with my career? Yeah. As opposed to, oh, I'm so grateful for anything that comes, you know, yeah. and you jump at every opportunity and you find yourself just moving on with everything that, you know, uh, gives presented to you. Yeah. As opposed, to, as, as opposed to you defining it from the get-go. And that's one of the biggest challenges that uh, many of us as uh, career people professionals face. Because mm. in the absence of a clear view of who you are, mm -hmm. what you're trying to achieve, mm -hmm. you just move along. But also, so uh, I didn't mention this, so with every conversation I had mm -hmm. with the headhunter, I turn it around. Okay. Say, this is what I want. You go and find out from the people who have sent you mm. if they can deliver to this. If they can deliver to this, come back and have a conversation. Wow. Come back. Otherwise, if they cannot, so then the initial conversation is not about uh, some sort of interview mm -hmm, or some mm -hmm, sort of mm -hmm. uh, competency-based interview. Yes. It's about actually, you know what, the candidate wants one, two, three, four, five. And what I mean by the thought, let's say money. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. exactly who I am, what I want, what environment I want to work in, what I summit on, I think I've got. Mm -hmm. Then I work on that basis. Then you come back, once you've come back, you can then chat. So yes, they can deliver on those things, then we come back and we chat. And that's exactly how it should be. Sure. And that's exactly how it should be. We should all come back and say, great, thanks for the call. Let's, let me tell you what I want. At which point is one expected to have that, con that type of conversation in your career? Maybe not too early on, because yeah. one may appear too <laughs> complex. <laughs> so I guess um, you could argue there's a point of, 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 of balance here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I think maybe except for the first one or two jobs in your life, mm -hmm. your career, mm -hmm. once you've amassed some sort of experience mm -hmm. and expectation, I think you can begin to do that. And I actually did that quite early in my career. Okay. Quite and that's helped you. It's helped me tremendously. And yes, you could argue, I've never had to apply for a job. Yes, they come to me. But even if you did, mm -hmm. when you get the first opportunity to talk to me, this is who I'm sort of at. Mm. Because what that does, it ensures early on a high level of uh, synchronization between you and the business. Mm -hmm. And you know what you came here for? Yeah. And for as long as those things are in place, you stay. I'm in love, Bongani, with the notion of service. Yeah. I'm in love with the idea of purpose. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of corporate people struggle with this idea of corporate. You know, when you are college, you're assuming an HR role yeah. or a marketing role, yeah. and you know who you are, that you, you know what you're made of. Yeah. Um, you know what the heavens have called you for. Yeah. Um, I suppose then the question to you is, how do you assume or pursue your purpose in the everyday responsibilities that you have now at APSA? Yeah. So... Um, I, I read a lot okay. and I engage and talk to people quite a lot mm. um, and I can tell you that I share your passion mm -hmm. around this whole theme of purpose. Mm -hmm. I really genuinely do. Okay. I believe it is a major differentiator. Yeah. Um, and uh, probably one of the most defining uh, insights I've ever gotten into purpose comes from uh, a book by Victor Frankl. Frankl. Mm. Men's Social Men's Meaning. Social Meaning. I love it. Love that book. Love it's it. such a small book. I always tell yeah. people yeah. I bought. By the way, often when I join teams, yes. I buy my teams, my direct reports of the book. Okay. 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 That already and tells me a lot about you know, who you I are. I buy mm -hmm. them the book. So mm -hmm. then, guys, this is the book that will help you find your meaning. And there's a few other books that will help me do that. And in there, he talks about the fact that all of us have got a specific assignment to mm. achieve from which we cannot be replaced. Mm -hmm. So if you perform below your assignment, 
Yeah. You live a gap in the universe. Mm. Because mine is a specific and different to yours as it is to the next person. So I therefore have always had a sort of vision, purpose mm -hmm. for my life. Mm -hmm. Um, that I continuously look at and review and uh, work towards achieving. Mm -hmm. But it is driven by a huge sense of purpose. And one of the underlying themes of it is that whatever I touch, mm. I must leave it better than when I first found mm. it. And mm. just going back to the point around, uh, you talked about uh, head hunting and all of that. Yes. So one of the things I tell high titles, mm -hmm. anybody who wants to engage me, mm. is if I do not feel that I can make a contribution, because mm. remember that drives me. Yes. There is no need for me to join you, because I am driven by the need to make a difference. Mm -hmm. These are the things that are important to me in making a difference. Am I going to be given that space, okay. that opportunity to make a difference? So okay. just come back to purpose. For me, it really so drives me, is that I must leave things better than when I first found them. And that means, therefore, that I cannot do everything. I cannot be everything. Mm -hmm. I must just focus on those things that when I do them, yeah. it makes an impact. And that's about leaving mm. a legacy. Mm. And we all, I think, are called upon to do that in one way or another. I'm in love, Vongani, with the notion of service. Yeah. I'm in love with the idea of purpose. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of corporate people struggle with this idea of corporate. You know, when you are college, you're assuming an HR role yeah. or a marketing role, yeah. and you know who you are, that you, you know what you're made of. Yeah. Um, you know what the heavens have called you for. Yeah. Um, I suppose then the question to you is, how do you assume or pursue your purpose in the everyday responsibilities that you have now at APSA? Yeah. So, um, I, I read a lot okay. and I engage and talk to people quite a lot. Mm. Um, and I can tell you that I share your passion mm. around this whole theme of purpose. Mm -hmm. I really genuinely do. Okay. I believe it is a major differentiator. Yeah. Um, and uh, probably one of the most defining uh, insights I've ever gotten into purpose comes from uh, a book by Victor Frankl. Frankl. Mm. Men's Sexual Men's Meaning. Men's Meaning. I love it. Love that book. Love it's it. It's such a small book. I always tell yeah. people when yeah. I bought. By the way, often when I join teams, yes. I buy my teams, my direct reports of book. Okay. 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 That already and tells me a lot about you know, who you I are. I buy mm -hmm. them the book. So mm -hmm. then, guys, this is the book that will help you find your meaning. And there's a few other books that will help me do that. And in there, he talks about the fact that all of us have got a specific assignment to mm. achieve from which we cannot be replaced. Mm -hmm. So if you perform below your assignment, yeah. you live a gap in the universe. Mm. Because mine is a specific and different to yours as it is to the next person. So I, therefore, have always had a sort of vision, purpose mm -hmm. for my life, mm -hmm. um, that I continuously look at and review and uh, work towards achieving. Mm -hmm. But it is driven by a huge sense of purpose. And one of the underlying themes of it is that whatever I touch, mm. I must leave it better than when I first found mm. it. And mm. just going back to the point around, uh, you talked about uh, head hunting and all of that. Yes. So one of the things I tell high titles, mm -hmm. anybody who wants to engage me, mm. is if I do not feel that I can make a contribution, because mm. remember that drives me. Yes. There is no need for me to join you, because I am driven by the need to make a difference. Mm -hmm. These are the things that are important to me in making a difference. Am I going to be given that space, okay. that opportunity to make a difference? So okay. just come back to purpose. For me, it, it really so drives me, is that I must leave things better than when I first found them. And that means, therefore, that I cannot do everything. I cannot be everything. Mm -hmm. I must just focus on those things that when I do them, yeah. 
it makes an impact. And that's about leaving mm. a legacy. Mm. And we all, I think, are called upon to do that in one way or another. You know, um, it's amazing. I, I, I suppose I can go very personal here because yeah. <laughs> really this is as personal as it's going to yeah. get. Um, it's absolutely, the, the person who I, um, who introduced us, yeah. you know, you know, you and I, yeah. that is exactly what he says when he talks about you. Yeah. That leaving a lasting legacy yeah. aspect, you making a difference in people's lives, you, yeah. it's exactly what he yeah. has said. So, yeah. you know, I, I can't even listen to this with one ear and it's going out the other because I know it rings true to mm. the person who introduced us. Mm. Wow. I, I am huge on it. And I think my difference when I was in corporate, I, I didn't know who I was. Mm. I struggled with identifying with who mm. I was. I saw myself just as a marketing manager, mm. do the work, you know, ROI, mm. KPIs. Mm. Um, didn't identify with anything else but the yeah. fact that I'm a marketing manager. Yeah. And I find that a lot of people still struggle with this. It was only when I was outside of the organization mm. where I deliberately went looking mm. for myself. And it's interesting because people oh. go looking for themselves and yet yourself has been yeah. with you all Absolutely. along, you know. And it was just about me giving myself the, the space yeah. and being intentional about unearthing that which mm. was within. Mm. And now I know. But yeah. point is, I suppose one does not need to leave organizations yeah. to go find who they yeah. are, go work at, as, as a yeah. monk somewhere. Yes. It's not necessary. Yes. I suppose the thing is, you, the gifts speak yes. to you every day. It's about yeah. listening. Absolutely. The universe applauds action and not yeah. thought. Yeah. You know, when it speaks, act mm. on it. Mm. You know, I think a lot of us are too shy to act on it because Absolutely. we've boxed ourselves in particular roles, mother, yeah. father, you know, a daughter, yeah. Yeah. A, a manager, yeah. and that's it. And yet the universe is yearning for your purpose to be fulfilled. Absolutely. And I think, I, I genuinely believe that if many of us as individuals understood that, mm -hmm. we would, our contribution uh, would be much bigger. Have you ever dropped an opportunity that you were given purely out of fear, doubting that you'll be able to do that which you are being asked to do? Not really. Mm -hmm. You know, I must admit, I, I, um, as I said to you, I embrace emotions. Mm -hmm. So I don't try and run away from them. Mm. And as I said, I've then learned to channel them. But certainly, I cannot recall any time in my life when I have been given an opportunity uh, and uh, reneged from it or didn't take it up mm -hmm. because I was fearful mm. or anxious. No. I tend okay. to go for this. You go for it. Sometimes to my detriment, but yes, okay. I tend to just go for it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in to Braving It. Um, what a lovely conversation we have had with Bongani. Stay tuned for many, many more conversations and please put your comments down below. We look forward to it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.